All right. So, Romans 6.23, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Uh, tell me what you were taught growing up about that passage. When I was growing up in the church, you know, not a lot of people talk about the wages of sin is death. It's mostly go to Calvary and, you know, when you die, you're going to go to heaven. So, when I've had maybe one conversation of the wages of sin is death. And usually, as a child, my understanding is kind of like if I sin, I was going to die. So, didn't understand the term of currency, didn't understand the term of wages or whatnot. I didn't even, I wasn't even working at the time. So I just said, okay, if I sin, I'm going to die. Just plain and simple. Did that scare you? It did scare me because if you think about it, um, I'm going to die because I did something wrong. And it's like, well, dang, okay, uh, you're going to make me live in fear to where I won't try to sin. But it always baffled me. I sinned a couple a couple days ago, just a few hours ago, or just before I walked into church. Why am I not dead yet? But it also confused us that when we die, we're going to heaven. So what do I have to be afraid of? Okay. Did you feel like there was a um, struggle trying to... Well, do you think it was conveyed like the wages of sin is going to hell? Or you're going to die and go to heaven? Absolutely not. No. no, no. Death is, death has a purpose. Death has a design. All it simply does, it just takes the life out of whatever object at that time. So for instance, animals have life. You kill them to death. All you're doing is just removing the life. You ain't gonna send an animal to hell. Same thing with us humans. You know, because we're more logical thinkers, we say, oh, when I die, I'm going to heaven or hell. Well, why can't I just go back to the ground like they did in the Bible? Death doesn't determine if I'm going to heaven or hell. Death's purpose is to just simply take the life out of me and return it back to the Father. Who created death? Didn't the Father create it? The purpose of death is not to condemn me. Death doesn't have that authority. The Father does. Okay. So I guess you went into my next question, which would have been, now that you're older and you've had a chance to study the context on your own, what does that passage mean to you? And it, it, does it give you a different feeling than what you were taught growing up in church? Yeah. When it comes to the wages of sin is death, I, Romans 6.23, I had to break it down a little bit. I had to say, who, who, who even said that? I thought Jesus said it, but it wasn't highlighted in red. So... <laughs> It wasn't highlighting red, so Jesus didn't say that. It was actually Paul talking to the Romans church. And basically he was kind, he was trying to tell them about, um, he was trying to tell them about serving two masters. You know, each master has their own um, currency and you can choose which one you want to do. You can choose life or you can choose death. And of course, sin was the wages of death. So, hey, you could choose his death or you could choose his life. You had a choice at that time. And he was letting them know in advance, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. So choose which one you want to do at that time. You want to keep sinning or do you want to accept Christ? Yeah, but um, neither did Paul ever say if you die and choose death, you are going to hell. He just let you know what your options are when you chose if you chose death. What is your opinion about the? The context, if you start a couple um, scriptures up, he's talking about um, how they were, he's using past tense about how they were once uh, serving, they were servants of sin. And he, he's making a comparison to now, which is uh, the present back then, of how they were once servants of sin, but now that you're servants of righteousness, mm -hmm. you have eternal life. And it kind of leads up, there's like four or five scriptures before that that leads up into that 23rd verse mm -hmm. um, what is your take on the the servants of sin versus the servants of righteousness okay so paul talking to the romans and the verse you're talking about is romans 6 verse 20 it says when you were slave to sin you were free from the control of righteousness and then it says you were free from the control of righteousness so 
if I had to put that in the context, if I'm sinning, I don't even care about righteousness. I don't even have to obey righteousness because I'm a sinner. And back in the Roman days, you know, back in the pagan times or when they were sins, put it like this. Sin can be considered like a desire, you know, and it's like it's a desire. I can stop when I'm ready. But if you don't stop in time, you'll become a slave to it. So when when Paul was talking to the Romans, he was basically saying, yo, you were a slave to your sin. You know, you thought you had control. You know, you thought you could do it. You know, you thought you were, you know, um, you thought you were just indulging in desires. You know, you were pagan, you know, in the Roman times, they did a lot of things that was that was out there that they had to warn against, you know, debauchery, drunkenness, um, orgies, um, malice, everything. And everybody were slaves to that. And he's giving them an option of choosing righteousness to say, yo, uh, you don't have to be a slave to sin. But if you're not a slave to sin, then what are you a slave to? You can be a slave to righteousness. You're going to choose one or the other. It's kind of not a gray area. And what is sin per se? Sin is just the disobedience of what God's, God's law has spoken. When it comes to sin, um, I want to know if you think, number one, and explain if you think there is a relationship between the very first sin that was committed with the very first death, and which is the very first sin was committed by Adam, mm -hmm. but the very first death was Abel. And Abel didn't do anything to die. Do you think there's a relationship between there when it says the wages of sin? What I'm really asking you is do you think there's a relationship between um, or do you think that those wages could mean um, the wages of your sin might carry on down through your seed? Okay. Couple things. Let me let me back up. You asked me. The wages of sin is death. You kind of asked me, is Adam being responsible for Abel's death? Well, technically, yes. And a technicality. Let's take it back. When Adam and Eve were made, they were made perfect. They were made whole. As a matter of fact, death had a purpose back then, but he wasn't introduced yet. Adam and Eve, if you think about it, were kind of made to live forever. Otherwise, why would you curse me with something like death? So... Let's take it a step further. Adam and Eve sin. Because of that sin, God had to punish Adam. So when he punished Adam, Adam had to die. Two things had to ha two things happened at the time. Adam didn't die right away. A couple hundred years later, he died physically. But he also lost his ability to live forever for eternity. For eternity, it's kind of like, well, how do you separate the physical death from the eternal death? Well, the physical death, he lived to be only a couple hundred, 500, 600 years old. The spiritual death he lost was the fact that he was able to live forever. That spirit came from God when he took it away and gave him death as an exchange. That's what you came up with. Now, how does that relate to Abel? Abel wasn't responsible for what Adam and Eve did in the garden. No, he wasn't responsible. But because he's born of the same bloodline of Adam, Adam had introduced sin into his body or through his life or through his blood. Abel was born from Adam. He carries the sin bloodline in him. So because of Adam's mistake, we're all destined to die. Because of that one sin, it passed on through all generations. Okay. Does that kind of make sense? Or? It does to me. So, cool. for the um, for the judgmental people out there, the judgmental Christians, right, mostly. Okay. Um, and then with the recent death of uh, Eddie Long, um, there's a lot of people out there seeing a lot of stuff. But when I thought about it and went back and researched this scripture, um, it brought me to where what you said in the beginning, which is death doesn't mean hell. No. So the wages of sin does not mean hell. It just means death. So that means there there may have been, there's a good possibility that Bishop Eddie Long and everyone else on this earth, before we die, we have a chance to get it right with God. Do you believe that? Absolutely. Because you have to remember, if wages of sin is death, if the wages of sin is death, what did Jesus die for? 
If the we don't of sin are the wages of sin are death, and we were all going to die. What difference would it make? What did Jesus die for? Jesus died for our sins. Like we would never, we would never be able to satisfy the requirements of 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 sin, which is which. Excuse me, never require the satisfy. We would never be able to <laughs> satisfy the requirements or pay the currency, which is death. We have to give up our own life. On our life alone will satisfy. You know the wages however that's it we don't have anything left over that's why jesus had to die for us because it's like yo i can't even save myself so something greater than me died for me in order that i can still come back around and have life now i am going to die the physical death i am going to die the physical death but the eternal life that i'm going to get was that that what had originated in the garden of eden with adam and eve they were intended to live forever it is because of their sin that they had to die so because i'm going to choose christ and christ already died for me when i die can i be rose up again as well absolutely because now i'm going to have the chance to get what I was supposed to before sin entered the world. I'm going to be able to have the gift of eternal life. Now, does that mean I'm going to be in heaven? Does that mean I'm going to be in hell? That is a question that will be debated amongst a lot of religions. You know, some religions say we're going to go, all of us are going to go to heaven. Jehovah Witnesses say only 144,000 of us is going to go to heaven. But then what the heck about the rest of us? We were going to live in a world where there was no sin. There was no death. It was perfect. And that eternal life is exactly that. We're going to be able to live on earth as it was in the days of Adam and Eve before sin came into the world. We will live as perfect human beings. No death, no sickness, no crying, no hurt, no pain. We're going to live a perfect life. That sometimes get missed when you talk about heaven, hell, and eternal life. Eternal life is going to be restored here on earth. Okay. Now, <clears throat> so I think the majority of people out there, when they hear that scripture, they get scared or they feel convicted because of the way most preachers uh, deliver it. So if you were sitting in front of uh, a bunch of young folks and you had to give a short spill on this passage, how would you deliver it in a manner in which the the young people and the youth wouldn't feel that fire and brimstone eternal conviction like they're going to hell. How would you deliver it with three parts? Three um, parts. Educating them on something. Okay. Giving revelation. Okay. And giving inspiration. Trying to focus on those three points, how would you deliver this passage to a group of young people? If I had to deliver the wages of sin was death to a group of young people, my first thing is to let them know, hey, at this time, when you were born, where you are and where you are now, we have sin in our bodies naturally. When you were born as a child, there was sin in your body. It came down from our ancestors all the way back to the days of Adam and Eve. They need to know where it originated from. How did I get this? Where did this come from? Why? Well, how did I didn't even ask for this? Explain to them. Hey, this came from our ancestors of Adam and Eve when God first created the world. This is how they introduced it. Now. Explaining how the youngsters got it. The next thing I would kind of add would add on to this is what is death? Explaining to them through scriptures what death really is. Death is sanctified. Death has a particular purpose. Death's purpose is to smite the life that is in you. It will take the life out. Close your eyes. Close your thinking. Close the spirit. Take it. Will death will take. God's spirit back to him and we'll turn it back to him. They may ask me, well, what's going to happen to our bodies? What's going to happen back to us? I'm going to say the same thing that happened to Adam and Eve. You're going to return to the ground, like they said in Genesis. And then the kids may get discouraged and they may say, oh, man, like, that's it. I ain't going to have no life because I sinned. But here's the inspirational piece. Someone died for you. Someone that was perfect gave up their life in exchange for your, your life. And that, sacri that, that sacrifice paid for the wages of sin, which is death, 
paid for your life and gave it to you, gave it in exchange for you. A one for all kind of ticket. One man had to die for all of us. And what that means is when you die, that's it. But this man who came to give you life, you're going to get it back. But in order to get the life back, you have to tell that man, I believe you exist and I believe you died for me. And even though you may continue to sin, even though you may not be perfect, you can simply say, because I believe you exist and I believe you intentionally did that for me. All I have to do is simply believe it. There's nothing else I can do. Then you're going to get that life back. That's kind of how I would explain it to the kids. But in order to get the life back, you got to tell Jesus, I believe you did it. I accept it. And that's it. And those words along will. And the conviction itself will, you know, I hope will restore the life back to him. And it's just that simple. Nothing added, nothing sugar-coated. It is really that simple if you look at it. Okay. Oh. Thank you for your time.